Hello, my name is Steve Thomas and I'm from Smith School of Business at Queen's University. So as we all know, AI has shown many success stories recently. The promise of self-driving cars, for example, to the promise of helping doctors make cancer diagnoses, to personal assistance that everyone has in their pockets on their cell phones now, Amazon Alexa and, and uh, Siri and Google Home, and inventory robots who can fulfill 200,000 orders a day in big warehouses across the world. At its core, AI is all about models making predictions. And these models are simply mathematical formulas that take some numbers as input and they produce a prediction as output. For example, we might have a model that will predict whether a loan applicant will end up paying their loan back or defaulting on their loan. So this model, uh, can be used by humans by just, we, we give a loan applicant's data to the model, their income and credit score, for example, and the model will insert these numbers into its equation, do the math, and come up with the prediction that is more likely. And we can do this again and again. We give different data to the model and it might make a different prediction. So this relatively simple paradigm of a model making prediction is extremely useful for for businesses and for society. Because these AI models, first of all, they are automated, which means that you can run them again and again and again at scale for thousands or, or even millions of people at a time. Second, these models are highly accurate. These math equations that the, math, that the models are using are finely tuned from large amounts of historical training data. And finally, they're consistent. So the model will make the same prediction again and again and again, given the same data set. It's not uh, influenced by its current mood or whether it's grumpy or what the person looks like or anything like this, any of these uh, biases that humans have. And this is why AI has had so many success stories in business, everything from predicting credit risk scores to finding um, fraud in real time to self-driving cars, as we said. However, it's not all rosy. Recently, people have been realizing that AI predictions can be biased themselves. One famous example is the comp compass algorithm, which tries to predict if a criminal will re-offend if released. And the problem with the compass algorithm is that uh, researchers found that its predictions had twice the false positive ratio for blacks than it did for whites, which means that it is keeping blacks in jail twice as often as it should compared to whites. Another disturbing example is an algorithm that was used to predict crime, and it would tell police where to go to monitor crime. The problem with these predictions is that it would almost always send police to lower income minority neighborhoods, regardless of the actual crime rate there. Another bad example is from Apple. So Apple released a credit card called Apple Card, which was shown to be biased against female applicants. This card would uh, give female applicants 20 times lower credit limit even though the female would have identical application statistics and input data as a, as a male. Another example is from Amazon. So Amazon wrote an AI-based HR screening tool to screen resumes, but this algorithm was shown to be biased against females as well. As well. And finally, there was a, an algorithm used by the city of Pittsburgh to predict which children's families are at risk for abuse. But this, this algorithm was shown to be biased against poor families, and it often predict abuse in poor families at a much higher rate than it should. One final example is a study of commercial facial recognition systems in the US. And these facial recognition systems were shown to be biased against black and Asian faces in that it could not tell Asian faces from each other or black faces from each other, 
even though it was really good at, it had a very high accuracy on white faces. And this is bad because whenever you have a false positive match on a black or an Asian face, there could be severe repercussions from that. So what's going on here? What's wrong? What is wrong with this, these AI predictions? Well, let's think about that model. The model that's making predictions, where does it come from? Well, it comes from a machine learning algorithm. An algorithm is given a bunch of historical data and the algorithm will learn which what's the best equation to make the predictions. Now, it's not. it turns out it's not the algorithm itself that's biased. The algorithm itself is just trying to maximize some mathematical obje objective function. So it has no way to know or tell the race of somebody. It doesn't even know what numbers it's dealing with. To the algorithm, it's just dealing with raw numbers, zeros and ones and, and twos and threes. It doesn't know or and it can't know which of these numbers represents race or gender or disability status. The model is also not biased. The model, like we said, is just a mathematical equation that best separates the data into certain classes. So that leaves us with the data. Where is the data coming from? And could that be the problem? Turns out that yes, it is the data. The data is where the bias is, is coming from. By the way, the protected attributes that researchers are that care most about are the protected attributes defined by US and Canadian governments, for example, such as race, religion, color, gender, and so on. This is these are the kinds of of bias or, or of subgroups that we want to protect from bias. In the data, it turns out there are three different sources of how the bias creeps in there in the first place. One is called historical data or historical bias. Historical bias is when the data is correctly capturing what happened in the world, but what happened in the world was biased because humans are biased. For example, when, when managers hire men over women for no reason other than them being men, this will be captured in the data and that data will now have historical bias. And then in fact, this is exactly what happened at Amazon with their resume screening tool. This is also what happened with the crime prediction tool. Since police have historically gone to minority neighborhoods, uh, more often than they should, the algorithm learned that that's what they should do in the future. Another source of bias in the data is called representation bias. This is when the data contains samples from one subgroup much more than another subgroup. This is exactly what happened in the facial recognition system. The, the data that was used to train this model what, had a lot of of Caucasian faces, so the model was able to very well learn the difference between Caucasian faces, and it had relatively few black or Asian faces. So the model wasn't able to learn, the algorithm wasn't able to build a model for those faces that worked very well. And the third kind of bias in data is called measurement bias. This is when researchers in they have trouble measuring what they actually want to measure, so they measure a proxy variable instead, but that proxy variable isn't as good as they think it is. For example, if you wanted to measure, it, in the compass algorithm, uh, researchers wanted to measure how many crimes a criminal has committed in the past. But you, you, nobody knows how many crimes somebody's committed, so what they decided is how many how many times has that person been arrested? Uh, and they thought, oh, arrests will be a good proxy for a number of crimes. But the problem is that's not a good proxy because minorities get arrested much more than they should. Um, and so despite the number of crimes that they actually committed. And so that's not a good proxy measure. And so what we call that measurement bias. So those are some of the problems. But now comes the hard problem of defining what is fair. Like how can we even determine if the predictions made by one model or another are fair or not? That itself is a difficult problem. Uh, luckily, there's been some good proposed solutions on how to measure if predictions are fair. 
One such way is called group independent predictions. This is a way to measure if the predictions that are made by the model are independent of group membership. Let me give you an example. So let's say we've built a model uh, to predict whether someone will repay their loan. If we gave the model uh, some, some data and said, what do you think? What, make a prediction for this person. And we included a protected attribute such as sex, we would observe what the model would predict. In this case, the model would say this person will pay. Then if we gave the same exact data to the model, only this time without the protected group, we want the model to predict the same thing. So this is to say the model did not need to know the protected um, attribute in order to make a make its prediction. So if a model does this consistently, then we will say that the model is fair. Another way to measure fairness is called equal metrics across subgroups. And this is a way to ensure that the model is treating all subgroups the same in its predictions. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say in our training data, we have um, a bunch of men and a bunch of women. Let's say we have a thousand men, 900 of which have paid and a hundred of which have defaulted. And we have 500 women, 300 have paid, 200 have defaulted. Now, when we, when we measure how good the model is working on these subgroups, we can measure the accuracy of its predictions, its true positive rate, and its false negative rates. And what we want is that these, these metrics are the same across subgroups. We want the model to be equally good for women as it is for men and vice versa. If it, if it has equal metrics, then we say that the model's predictions are fair. If these metrics were different, for example, if, if the true positive rate or false it was lower for women or the false negative rate was higher for women, then we would say that this model is unfair towards women. So that's great. We have two ways to measure if a model's predictions are fair. So how do we do this? How do we, how do we actually build a model that is fair? Well, the naive solution, this is what most people think of when they first think of this problem, is they think, oh, let's just remove the protected attributes from the data. Let's just get rid of sex, for example, and never show it to the model, never show it to the algorithm. And if we do that, how could the model possibly be biased if it doesn't even know somebody's gender? Turns out, surprisingly perhaps, that this does not work. Why doesn't it work? The problem is because of historical bias against women in this example. Women historically make less money than men for the same job. Women historically have worse credit scores despite having equal credit histories. And because of this, if you were to show the model just the numbers without any context, i.e. without knowing the gender, it's gonna think that uh, these people are very different. They, this is gonna think that person two has a lower income and a worse credit score and therefore is gonna be less likely to, to pay back. The model, so in, in a counterintuitive way, the model needs to know the gender in order to counteract historical bias. Because without the gender, the model can't tell a, a bad man from a normal woman, for, for example. So you, that's not the solution. And it turns out it gets even harder. Defining fairness is very difficult because it depends on how the model intends to be used. For example, in HR decisions, it is actually illegal to use protected attributes in that decision. So you cannot use race, you cannot use gender when you decide to hire somebody. It's illegal in most Western countries. On the other hand, in medical decisions, you have to use protected attributes, otherwise people will die. Different genders respond to the, uh, different dosages differently. Even races have different rates of disease, age, disability status, weight. All of these things are crucial to a doctor's decision. So the doctor has to use these. And any model that the doctor's relying on also has to use these protected attributes. So it's kind of a slippery slope in, in knowing when to use protected attributes and when not. So that brings us back to the same question. 
how do we actually solve this problem? Well, the good news is there are a number of techniques to fix all pieces of this pipeline to help ensure fair and unbiased predictions. The first is on the data side. And the first thing we can do is make sure that the data is balanced. And by balanced, I mean you have an equal number of training samples for whites and blacks and Asians, for example, or for all the protected subgroups. This is gonna help with the representation bias problem where you have too many samples of one kind and not enough of another. So this would help for the facial recognition system, for example. The other thing you can do on the data side is remove measurement bias by removing proxy measures. Don't measure uh, proxy variables. Instead, measure exactly what you intend to measure. On the algorithm side, you can add constraints to the machine learning algorithm to force its model to be fair. And this is a little bit on the technical side, but basically you can, you can add these constraints that say, the model you make has to have the same uh, metrics for each subgroup. So same false positive rate for women and men, for example. So this is gonna help, this is gonna be our big tool against historical bias um, by forcing the predictions to be equal for all, for all subgroups. And finally, the last thing you can do is change the decision threshold for each subgroup on the model side. So without getting too technical, models basically have this decision threshold to determine uh, people who will pay versus people who don't pay. And instead of having just one threshold that everyone uses, you can introduce different thresholds for each subgroup. And so you might set one threshold up here and one threshold down here, effectively making it easier or harder for some groups to be classified as paid versus defaulted. So this is another tool for helping with historical bias that's present in the data. Okay, so that's great news. Um, other great news is there's a lot of research, a lot of interest in this recently, in this problem and in solving this problem. Uh, for those of you interested, there's a lot of nice blog articles uh, on the topic. There's a, here's a, some research articles that talk about bias and their solutions. And there's even some courses online that you can take uh, to learn more about ethics and, and bias and AI. So there's a, an entire course from Fast AI called Practical Data Ethics. There's courses on LinkedIn Learning. And in fact, at Smith, we have two master's degrees, two master programs, one in analytics and one in artificial intelligence. And in both of those programs, we have entire courses on AI ethics. So let me leave you with this. AI has many successes, which is great. However, AI predictions have been shown to be biased. And this is because of bias in the training data. There are three, ki three main kinds of bias to be aware of. Historical bias, representation bias, and measurement bias. We can't fix the problem by just removing protected attributes from the data. That sounds nice, but it just doesn't work. But instead, we do have some tools in our toolbox. First, we can make sure the data is balanced and we can make sure the data does not have proxy measures. Second, we can add fairness constraints directly to the machine learning algorithm so that the model it learns will be fair. And third, we can adjust the decision threshold um, of the algorithm, of the model, excuse me, to be uh, different for each subgroup to ensure fairness. And let me leave you with this last thought you need to ensure fairness in your AI models. Don't assume that the algorithm is just gonna do it properly or that the data is probably clean enough or that it's not gonna matter that much. You, everyone needs to solve this very, very important problem by taking active measures to measure whether your model's predictions are fair and to fix it using some of these techniques. Thank you.